If you're looking for a great movie about cops and robbers and guns and gasoline, look no further than Michael Mann's 1995 crime thriller slash drama, Heat. And whatever you do, don't let the three hour runtime fool you. Once you get locked in, you're locked in for the whole way. Simply because this film really is one of the greatest crime movies ever made, packed with one legendary cinematic sequence after another. To the point where it could be considered to be the illegitimate father of pretty much all the great crime movies of the 2000s. Even if you've never seen Heat, I guarantee you, you've seen the cultural impact of Heat. The town, The Departed, The Dark Knight, Grand Theft Auto, name your pick. Whatever kind of an entertainment product it is you prefer, if it has crime in it, odds are it draws inspiration from this film. But while Heat is full of legendary sequences, there is one that stands out as the most legendary. The downtown shootout following the main bank robbery. Again, even if you haven't seen this film, odds are you have seen at least a clip of this specific sequence. Unless, of course, you are either 4 years old or blind. Since this downtown shootout in Heat is so legendary, it's no surprise then that other later movies have tried to emulate and recapture its legendariness time and time again. A more recent example of this being the 2018 crime film Den of Thieves and its ending shootout between the cops and the robbers. And to be absolutely fair to Den of Thieves, it's not a bad shootout sequence. Not at all. Actually, I'd say it's a rather well-made shootout sequence. Yet, when you bring it up and compare it with Heat's bank shootout, for some reason it just doesn't feel the same. It's hard to quickly put your finger on what exactly the problem is, it's just that uh, something just isn't right. Something is missing. And this is why we are here today. Let's take a look at the most important strengths of the shootout sequence of Heat and compare those strengths with the shootout sequence of Den of Thieves in order to pinpoint the discrepancies. What is it that sets this shootout apart from this one? What exactly is it that makes the bank robbery shootout sequence in Heat better than any other shootout sequence in any other movie? I mentioned before that one of the drawbacks of Heat is its near 3 hour runtime. Some people could get turned off by that and I fully understand why. And while I usually would say that no movie should ever be nearly 3 hours long, I am willing to make an exception with a select few examples. And one of them is Heat. Why is Heat one of them? Because director Michael Mann takes that extra time and uses it so effectively to build up tension, as is very much the case with the shootout sequence. Since this entire sequence does revolve around a bank robbery, you'd think that the bank robbery is the actual highlight. But that's not the case. The robbery isn't the highlight. The robbery isn't the climax. No. Its only purpose is to build up tension for the real highlight of the sequence. The shootout. Look at the robbery section closely and you might notice a few strange aspects. There is no real resistance, there is no real conflict or difficulty. The whole thing goes off without a hitch, smoothly as planned. And that's because the robbery is here just to function as a setup for what comes next. Don't believe me? Just listen to the rhythmic pumping music. Notice how it stays pretty much the same the entire time. It doesn't change, it doesn't peak, it just steadily builds up tension. Once the robbery is over and we're back on the street, the movie still keeps building up tension. As the robbers emerge to the getaway car one by one, the cops gradually creep in. Closer and closer and closer. Then, finally, after more than four minutes of steady buildup, the music all of a sudden ends and the real climax begins. Get down. Ah! 
Skipping past the setup is a pitfall very easy for a modern movie to fall in. The filmmakers can be so eager to get to the highlight that they forget to properly build up to it. Based on the King Arthur video I did, if it was Guy Ritchie directing Heat, the robbery section would have probably been cut down to a few seconds of passing visuals in order to save time. And uh, that's not so good. If you don't build up to the climax, the climax won't be as effective. Den of Thieves, however, doesn't make this mistake. In fact, it takes Heat's example and follows it exactly. The cops and the robbers are stuck in traffic. The cops start creeping in, guns up, pushing past civilians closer and closer. The tension builds and builds and builds until the robbers fire the first shot and all hell breaks loose. Whatever it is that sets Heat apart from Den of Thieves, it isn't the build-up. Both movies successfully accomplish it. So let's keep looking. Since big gunfights are meant to be disorienting and hectic, a lot of movies can in the process forget one very important thing. These big hectic gunfights also always need slower character moments. If those moments are left out, the end result will feel empty. A big flashy pile of nothing. You could say that in Heat's shootout there's a bunch of slower character moments, but to me there are two most crucial ones. One moment for each main character. For Robert De Niro, this moment happens inside the getaway car. So far, his character has been established as a meticulous professional who doesn't want people to get hurt. But now, because he's backed up against the corner, he can't stick to his own philosophy anymore, like was the case earlier in the movie. He is past the point of no return. So, for the very first time in this entire shootout sequence, he picks up his rifle with intent and he fires it. And what this moment tells us is that from here on out, all bets are off. We're in the end game now. For Al Pacino, the moment happens at the very end of the sequence when he finds one of the robbers with a little kid as a hostage. What's most important here is his decision to shoot, despite there being a little kid as a hostage. And because we do see him shoot, we realize just how similar Pacino's and De Niro's characters in some sense are. Faced with the hard choice, they're both willing to make it. Based on this moment, you could even argue that Pacino's character in a way is actually the worst of the two. All that information and insight about both lead characters characters with only a few seconds of personal moments. Sounds like a good deal to me. Cut those moments out and right away the sequence would feel much more hollow and without heart. Also, fun fact, remember my Sherlock Holmes video where I talked about slow motion as a great way to build up moments? Well, notice how both of these moments here do utilize slow motion. Almost as if I actually knew what I was talking about. Seeing as Den of Thieves is yet another Gerald Butler action movie, I was expecting it to fail with this point. But no. As with the build-up, this movie does once again take a page from Heat's book and successfully utilize character moments. Although, to be honest, it doesn't do it quite as well as Heat. For example, I would have liked to see a proper reaction from the main bad guy when his friends are gunned down around him. Here, we don't get anything like that. Instead, the guy just curses and runs off. But still, we do get a nice one-on-one -on -one moment between the bad guy and Gerald Butler. And through this moment, we see the bad guy for who he really is. A dedicated fighter who would rather die than give up. So, the difference between these movies isn't in character moments either. The search continues. Another aspect that made Heat's shootout sequence so iconic and unforgettable is just how real it manages to appear. This reality aspect divided into two major halves. First half is the reality of the environment, aka the destruction. We see glass shatter, we see bullets pierce metal, we see people getting shot and bleeding. It might be staged, it might be fake, it might be special effects, but it's not computer generated effects, it's practical effects. When shells fly through the air, they really fly through the air. When cars get riddled with holes, they really get riddled with holes. And because everything does really happen, to the audience it doesn't seem fake. To us, it all seems like the real deal. Same with the characters. They all act like they know what they're doing, as they should. 
They take cover, they switch positions, they handle their rifles correctly. They aim, they reload, and so and so and so on. Everything about the characters and their actions down to their expressions conveys the true feeling of reality. To be fair to Den of Thieves, this movie does manage all of it pretty much just as well. The destruction is practical heavy. The actors really do act like they've been properly trained. In fact, the only reason why Den of Thieves falls a bit short of heat in this aspect is the location. In Heat, the shootout takes place on a highly populated street in the heart of downtown. In Den of Thieves, it's on a tiny remote road that for some reason happens to be packed with cars. It's not that this location is bad, it's just that it isn't the same as the heart of downtown. And that's why Heat does stand up taller with this point. Add in those washed out colors this movie uses and there you go, full real immersion. But once again, reality isn't that big reason of discrepancy we're looking for. So then, what can it be? What is it that Heat has that Den of Thieves and every other gunfight movie doesn't? Yup, here we are, finally. If you have read up on the behind the scenes stuff about this movie prior to watching this video, you might have seen this coming, or heard this coming, whatever. The reason why no other movie shootout sequence to date has ever come close to that of Heat's is because of sound design. The sound of the weapons in Heat truly is one of a kind. And that's not to say that the sound design in other movies isn't good, that's not true. In Den of Thieves for example, I would argue that the sound design is very good. But the fact is, when it comes to the audio of a live shootout, Heat really plays in its own league. But of course, don't take my word for it, just listen for yourself. Again, Den of Thieves doesn't sound bad. Honestly, it sounds better than most other Hollywood movies. And the reason why gunfights in most Hollywood movies don't sound so good is because they do all the gun sounds in post-production. They record the weapons at a gun range afterwards, or worse, they use already existing weapon sound effects. If you wonder why so many movies today sound like Call of Duty, wonder no more. And here lies the key secret to Heat's sound superiority. See, Heat doesn't use post-production weapon sound effects. They were going to, yes, but when Michael Mann heard the result, he decided to scrap all of it and instead just use the live audio they picked up while filming. Because they did use real guns when they filmed. They used real blanks. Nothing artificial or could, could uh, come close to delivering the, the fear of the sound that the full load made moving, moving through those automatic weapons and the way the sound ricocheted off the walls of the buildings of an empty downtown. And because of the skyscrapers everywhere, it was just deafening and it would hang in the sky for maybe like eight or 10 seconds. We used 800 to 1,000 rounds per take. Notice how the gunshots linger in the air. Notice how they echo very differently based on where they're shot from. As the guy from Sicario would tell you, those aren't firecrackers. And no matter the technology you have at your disposal, you can't recreate that in post-production. I won't say the gun sounds in Den of Thieves are post-production. They did use blanks on that movie too, so there is a chance most of that audio is real as well. But still, it just isn't the same as in Heat. And the question then follows, why is that? Where does that difference of sound come from? In my opinion, there's a couple reasons for it. One, there might have been some level of re-recording in post-production on Den of Thieves, because it is a modern Hollywood movie after all. And I don't think a modern Hollywood movie can sound as dirty and muffled as he does. But more importantly, I believe that the difference most of all comes down to location. As in, the sound of a live gunfight will always be very different in a downtown street surrounded by window-heavy skyscrapers and a remote road far away from any tall buildings whatsoever. That's just physics, I guess. In short, the sound of Heat's shootout is the product of all the right pieces of the puzzle in all the right places. It was recorded live on set with real live gunfire in the perfect location. And this, along with each of the earlier points we went through, results in one thing. 
a legendary shootout sequence that no other movie has ever managed to successfully recreate. Hope you enjoyed this one, fellas and fellarets. At least for me, it's always nice to have a reason to return to this movie. Let me know your thoughts on the things discussed here today. And also, aside from Heat, which movies have your favorite best shootout sequences? Comment below. Bye!